Hey everyone, it's Sean. In this series of videos, I'm going to be walking you through some of the 3D layer effects that we can use in Illustrator. Uh, near the end of it, we'll be showing you how to create sort of a 3D beer can um, and also a pop can tab, sorry, not a pop can tab, a beer bottle cap or a pop bottle cap, depending on your style. And, uh, you know, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a new document. And I'm just going to use the same uh, document setups that we had previously, which was 6 inches by 4 inches RGB, um, just because it's easy. And the first thing that I sort of want to walk you guys through is basic 3D uh, sort of properties in Illustrator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out a shape. I'm going to make that shape uh, no stroke with a fill of something that isn't black. I'm just going to go with a nice uh, light blue color like so. And to access our 3D controls, um, what we have to do is go up to Effect, 3D, and there are three effects to choose from. So the first one I'm going to do is Extrude and Bevel. And what you can see right away is it does make the shape 3D. And uh, if you have this window pop up, fantastic. It should pop up for sure. Um, there's a bunch of options here, the first one being Rotation like so. Uh, there's basically, because it's 3D, so you have three axes to work from. You have X, you have Y, and you have Z. So X is kind of like, you know, you're up and down. Uh, y is your left to right. As you can see, you can sort of spin the whole thing. Um, and Z is its uh, place in space. Um, if this sort of uh, switching of uh, data points confuses you, you can grab onto this diagram and you can actually manipulate the diagram like so. Um, and as you manipulate it, the shape changes into wireframes uh, just to save your computer some computer, uh, some computing power. So that's sort of how you manipulate a shape uh, in terms of direction. Next is the extrude depth. How deep does your shape look? You can pull on this. Don't go to 700. That's really dramatic. Uh, but you can make the shape deeper um, or longer, depending on your vocabulary that you want to use here. I'm just going to leave mine at 50 for now. You can change the cap. Um, the cap meaning the face of your object. In this case, I turned the face of my object off. So now it's like a rectangular frame, or sorry, a square frame as opposed to a cube. It's a little bit confusing to look at, I know. Um, but if we turn our cap back on, you'll notice that our cube sort of drawer shape here has a face again and everything is uh, everything's good to go. Um, let me just bring this back onto a 3D sort of plane. Uh, the next thing you can do is choose the bevel. How do you want the edges of your shape to look? Um, obviously by choosing different bevel complexities uh, you can get completely different shapes. So some of these can be really cool when applied with the right type of style. Um, some of them are not necessarily as cool as others uh, but I'll sort of leave that up for you guys to play around with and get more familiar with. Uh, honestly, one of the things that I want to sort of point out when it comes to 3D shapes is 3D shapes tend to be very tacky at first um, because you need to customize them so drastically to get a really cool um, sort of effect going on. Simply just playing around with the complexity isn't going to probably be enough, which is kind of sad, but that's the reality. Uh, next thing you can adjust is the height. So sort of how deep does this complexity go? How much does it really affect your design? Uh, you can play around with that too. Um, and the, ex the bevel can either be interior or exterior. So it just changes the direction of um, sort of what parameters you are affecting here. And then finally down here, you have the option for shading uh, or sort of, I guess, how the software is going to interpolate your changes. If you're working a very complex document and you're on a computer that isn't highly souped up, uh, what you might want to have this set to is wireframe. Wireframe gets rid of all of the color, all of the shading, and allows you to focus on the structure of the document itself. You can see here, you can see all the changes it's making. Um, you can rotate it and you can do all sorts of different changes to it, but uh, you're not actually seeing any of the shading or color that's being applied. The next is no shading. Uh, personally, I don't have much of a use for this because it's extremely hard to see your 3D shape without shading or without line work. 
Um, the next is diffused shading. Uh, this is like more subtle and soft shading. This is probably more of what you'd see in real life. And plastic shading is sort of um, a little bit harsher, uh, a little bit more artificial. Now, this isn't all of the options in our 3D and Extrude menu. If you click on Show Options, you get all sorts of things about how you want the shading to hit your object. This uh, sphere here represents your object, and this white dot within the sphere represents the light source. Where do you want the light to be hitting your object from? You can control the light intensity. Uh, obviously, 100% is the strongest. Uh, zero is going to be the darkest and won't give you any form of light whatsoever. Ambient light is pretty interesting because ambient light you have to think about in terms of being in a room. When you're in a room and you have a lamp turned on, the lamp represents your light intensity. It's a light source that is hitting your object. Ambient light is the light that's within the environment you're sitting in. This could be coming from a window, it could be coming from a ceiling fixture light, it could be coming from monitors within that uh, environment, um, and if you increase the ambient light, you're increasing the overall lightness of the, of, uh, of the light in the room, and you can decrease the light intensity uh, from the ambient light. You can also increase the highlight intensity and the uh, highlight size, so if you want it to be really um, sort of specular and uh, specifically hitting one section of just a highlighted portion of your object, you can play around with these settings to really get some moody definition going on in your object. And finally, blend steps. This is kind of like what we covered with gradients. The fewer blend steps you have, the more banding you're going to have in your object, the more blend steps you have, the smoother your object will appear. The trade-off here that you guys have to be aware of is the more blend steps you have, the more complex your object will be, and the, uh, I guess, the harder it will be to work with within your file. Okay, so you want to be very judicial with how many blend steps you have. Uh, I think somewhere between 20 and 40 tends to be decent, um, but you know, adjust on your own sort of preference. The next thing is shading color. Right now our shading color is black. If you hit none, it gets rid of, you know, all of the shade um, and it's just leaving you with highlights. This is kind of a cool effect here. Um, I normally would always have a custom shaded color uh, because what we learned or what we actually know from experience is black is a really horrible shadow color. Uh, if you think about really terrible drop shadows that you've seen on, on work, um, it's usually because the drop shadow is 100% black and it's not, um, it's not accurate to real life. Shadows are usually a darker shade of the color of the surface they're appearing on, right? So considering we're working with a blue surface, our shading color should actually be a dark shade of blue. And it just helps to make things look a little less harsh, a little bit more believable. Um, and that's sort of what you're aiming for when you're looking into lighting and shading. So that is an overview of the 3D and bevel options uh, within Illustrator's uh, 3D and bevel sort of tool. We can just scale that down and leave that off in the corner. The next thing we can do is we can create a tall rectangle, like so. We can go up to Effect, 3D, Revolve. And what this does is it creates a cylinder, right? All of the same um, tools and effects are being used here. Uh, they're just being used um, to create a cylinder instead of a cube. Uh, same lighting parameters still exist. You can go in and choose all these things. Um, you can see the difference between diffused shading and plastic shading. Plastic shading creates a huge highlight. And here's actually a really great example of blend steps. So let's increase our blend steps. Let's just keep going, going, going. You can see that banding eventually does disappear, but it disappears around the 150 mark. Um, that's going to really slow down your computer and your file. Uh, so if we hit OK, uh, if I go and start making some of these adjustments, you know, not too bad right now. I don't have much 
going on in this file though if you were trying to create a 3d object and you had like logos built on artboards off to the side and you had reference imagery built off to the side and all sorts of stuff this might start to cause you a bit of a problem so i just really want to make sure that you guys are aware of that um, before you get into building any 3d objects and starting to wonder why my computer is so slow the really cool thing about 3d objects though is that they are based off of vector shapes okay so if i hit command y to open up my wireframe you see two shapes here you see a square and you see a rectangle right if we actually jump into our legit document though you start to see these 3d shapes and um, that's because illustrator is doing its own math in the background it's not creating super complex shapes by having each one of these be a multiple um different sort of face or element to itself you know, there's really kind of cool stuff to be done there. Uh, and the nice thing is, is you can go in and adjust these shapes. So I can round the corners here and create more of like a rounded cylinder. Um, I can also go and adjust the size of it. So it's a little bit more, uh, you know, stout and plump as opposed to tall and thin. Uh, so there's all sorts of different ways that we can go about achieving cool shapes um, by doing this. All right. So I'm going to leave that guy up there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create a ellipse, a circle, same color, just draw out a circle by uh, clicking out, holding shift and dragging, go up into 3D and rotate. Actually, I think with a circle rotate isn't really going to do a whole lot here. Um, it'll just basically, you know, make it 3D in the sense that uh, it can draw out or it can change the perspective of it, right? And you can sort of see how it's changing the perspective based within our circular uh, confines here. So I'm just gonna hit escape and uh, move back into extrude and bevel. Um, and this is kind of a cool place where if we turn off the cap, you can really see what I'm showing you here. Uh, it becomes a tube, right? A nice sort of tubular shape. Um, you could change the bevel here to sort of create a really interesting ring. Um, there we go. I can increase the uh, extrude depth and make an even longer tube, right? So there's just all sorts of really kind of cool uh, things that we can do um, with different shapes within our uh, 3D objects panel. Um, you can even create a donut, I believe. Uh, I haven't had to create a donut in a long time, but we're going to try and learn together. Hit uh, 3D, extrude and bevel, change the cap. Um, it's actually a really great lesson in how to do this. And actually, I lied. It's not a rectangle that we want to build a donut with. Um, it's actually a circle. And in this case, instead of going under rotate, we're going to use extrude and bevel. Nope, sorry, not extrude and bevel. We're going to use revolve. There we go. And so you can see now, I'm just going to move my window over so we can actually get a better look at this. I'm going to angle it more towards us. We have a cute little donut. You can align things to different edges when you're using revolve here, right? Uh, we can change the cap if we would like to. It doesn't actually seem to really do a whole lot since a sphere doesn't really have a cap. Um, and you could increase the offset. Actually not sure that offset is going to do much in this case, um, just because it is a sphere. Uh, but yeah, there's all sorts of um, kind of interesting things that you can achieve uh, just by using different shapes and shades here. Um, the other cool thing, again, if we just switch over to wireframe, you can see all of the wires that go into making this sort of a shape here. Uh, so yeah. Um, I would just honestly fool around with the 3D tools, but just know that to create a really cool piece of 3D work, uh, which in future videos I'm going to be walking you through how to make a few of them, they require a lot of time, patience, and extra design flair. So just whipping something out from those menus probably will sort of be a little bit dejecting, but it's all good because that's what I'm here for and we'll walk you through it. So I'll catch you guys in the next video and uh, see you then.